It's not about preserving buildings as they were at a particular point in time. It's making heritage work for the people of today. What we try to do at the foundation is teach traditional techniques, not as a finishing point, but as a stepping off point. Today's quick build, fast spark housing projects, they don't have community at the heart of their purpose. The idea of having local building materials that have been used so that it, it is of a place rather than of, of no place. It's about saying these buildings can contribute now to the communities in which they sit. Somehow there is something within us which wants to create this environment that, that helps to enhance a sense of community rather than destroy it. The Princess Foundation for Building Community is really all about empowering and engaging and educating people to make a difference in their own communities. This project is a part of the overall effort that began with Dumfries House to help with the regeneration of East Ayrshire, a former coal mining area. And we're stood in front of uh, Knock Roon, which is an extension to the town of Cumnock. Knock Roon came out of a week-long engagement with the community to try to develop a set of principles for the kind of place that they would like to see and the kind of places that they would like to live. At the core of our planning is, is a set of principles that we think are fairly universal to humans, and that is the notion of having your daily needs met within about a quarter mile of your house, a five-minute walk. The idea of having streets that are enclosed and overlooked so that people are safe on the streets because they feel, the streets feel like they're both contained and owned by the people who, who live on them, but are nonetheless open and accessible so that you can walk through and that encourages a balance of both walking and neighborliness and an architecture that reflects uh, local building traditions, local building materials that have been used that actually gives people the feeling that they're in a community but they're also in a home that they can call their own. Knowledge about construction, about design, planning, the arts and crafts, the integration of all these things together, they were all about to die out. So I wanted to train younger people in a living tradition of architecture and craftsmanship to maintain the best of that. First off this morning they've split the ash to make the staves, which are the uprights. Some are in the process of splitting hazel to make the wattles a hurdle within a timber frame. That's just a local subsoil, so all the organic topsoil has been taken away. It comes from a site about a mile or so away, so it's really local and they're mixing it with water and straw to make a door. It's quite sticky and <laughs> tough. And in some countries they would make bricks and leave them out to dry in the sun, and then they can actually build with those. Well, the summer school is really the foundation of our educational program, and the purpose of it is actually to give people an introduction to a whole set of ideas around what we call a culture of building, the idea that um, in building we're building our future, in building we're learning how to work together, and in building we're experiencing a closer relationship with, with nature and what nature has to give us. All you do is stick it on and push it in and fill all the gaps and then it forms a solid layer. I'm a stonemason, or I've just tra finished training as a stonemason, this three weeks you work with um, architects and planners and the research fellows who are at the Prince's Foundation. So you get such a great mix of minds and attitudes and approaches and backgrounds. We purposefully do it in a way that is interdisciplinary, bringing together young architects with craftspeople, with planners and with people from the general public to teach them that this is all about integrating ideas rather than specialising and separating them. The Thatcher here, Alan Jones, who's really a marvelous character, actually looks after reed beds and grows his own wheat. And as a part of this, um, he, he shows that the process of um, taking the grain from the wheat allows you to bake bread, but the waste material 
becomes thatch which covers your roof. And it, it begins to teach um, through tradition um, how we deal with the cycles of nature and how we can integrate nature into our own communities, into our ways of living. And that's, that's why traditional techniques are important. Prince of Wales set up the Prince's Generation Trust, or its sort of forerunners, about 15 years ago. And I think he was driven by the fact that as he goes around the country, visiting all different parts of the UK, he saw these wonderful historic buildings, which were built for a purpose for which they no longer required. There might be industrial buildings, hospitals, schools. He felt really strongly that they could be reused, that they could be brought back to life for the benefit of the communities in which they sit. Certainly at the time that he set up the trust, that was a, a very unique view of, of these buildings. Sadly, many were being lost at that time, and indeed they continue to be lost now under the current economic pressures. The particularly unique skills that are used here at Middleport Pottery in the manufacture of Burley, the product that's been made here since the building was first created in 1888, are the application of tissue to the ceramics. So it's all done by hand, it's done by eye, it's an incredibly skilled process and it's unique to this particular factory. So had we not been able to save this factory, there was a real danger that these skills would have been lost. Well, I'm born and bred Stoke-on-Trent. I graduated last July and from July to November, I was just searching for work, um, unsuccessfully, unfortunately. And this opportunity came up through Keel Internships. And this is the mould store, it's the largest collection in Europe. There's jelly moulds, moulds from coronations of kings and queens, Dickens characters, Shakespeare characters. And there's over 19,000 in this room. And they tell the story of the whole um, history of the factory, really. The project here at Middleport is, is a quite a significant project. It's bringing eight and a half million pounds worth of investment into Stoke-on-Trent. And it's not easy to raise that sort of funding in the current climate. We certainly couldn't have done it without the support of the Prince of Wales, who was able to work with us to attract uh, some significant private donors who, because they were willing to put investment in up front, made it much easier for us to talk to other organisations and ask for their support. 19th century mental hospitals or old mill buildings, it seemed to me there was the most appalling waste of assets not to reuse these buildings in a more enlightened and imaginative way. It's perfectly possible to blend the traditional outlook with the contemporary. Because by, by integrating the two in a more sympathetic and sensitive way, it seems to me you can enhance people's lives, their welfare, their work opportunities and you can create far greater social and environmental value. It's absolutely not about wrapping things in cotton wool or trying to treat them as though they have to be preserved forever as they actually were originally. It's making heritage work for the people of today. It's about saying these buildings can contribute now to the communities in which they sit.